Hi guys, I'm Haley, and I'm going to be responding to Randy's claim that gun restriction in California is too restrictive. So his secondary claims were that lowering regulation would lower crime rates and that lowering regulation would raise revenue. So what Randy did with this information is he presented to you the pros of a pros and cons argument. And in my speech, I'm going to demonstrate a number of cons that outweigh Randy's positive point. So the points I found that show that lowering gun regulation does more harm than good include that it puts children in jeopardy, it increases potential for self-injury, and it increases potential for homicide. So first off, I want to address my, opponent, my opponent's first point. He stated that lowering regulation would lower crime rates, and that's not true. Last year, economist Richard Florida, who is currently a professor and head of the Martin Prosperity Institute at the Rotman School of Management at the University of Toronto, he dove deep into the correlations between gun deaths and other kinds of social indicators and stated that with tighter gun control, law appears to have fewer gun-related deaths. And my first secondary claim is that lowering restriction puts children in jeopardy. So CNN.com tells us that 40 to 45 percent of households in the U.S. contain a gun. This translates into a loaded gun in one in every 10 households with children. And a gun that's left unlocked and just hidden away in one in every eight family homes. And in addition to this, there's no federal law that prevents a minor from accessing a gun. My next claim is that less restriction increases potential for self-injury. People already don't like just having guns around their house because they know that's a dangerous thing. But um, a gun in a house, at minimum, doubles the risk that a household member will kill himself or herself, according to DoSomething.com. Also, this source tells us that studies put the increase in suicide risk as high as 10 times. An American is 50% more likely to be shot dead by his or her own hand than to be shot dead by a criminal. And more than 30,000 Americans injure themselves with guns every year. And this is according to uh, the, an article in the New York Times. And my final claim is that with more guns, we get more homicide. The Harvard, the Harvard Injury Control Research Center assessed the literature on guns and homicide and found that there is substantial evidence that indicates more guns means more murders. Which is true whether you look at it in different countries or in different states. So in conclusion, other than Randy misinforming you about the correlation between gun control and deaths, Gun regulation in California is not too restrictive because if it were to be less restrictive, it puts children in jeopardy of being hurt and increases potential for self-injury and homicide. All right, well, you labeled the secondary claims, and you basically have set up a, your own argument on this. It sounds like a series of potential disadvantages or claims in favor of a policy advocating increased restrictions on guns. Uh, and I'm not sure that that's going to mean that uh, those are automatically um, mutually exclusive from the issues that the advocate talked about. I don't remember anything uh, that you mentioned concerning the economic issues that the advocate raised, so that seems a little bit odd as an illustration of this point. Uh, on the first point, uh, you talk about the crime rates, and I know that the advocate did make an argument about this, and you do have a, co a competing piece of information, so that applies to the issue that's being presented. Um, I don't remember how clear the advocate's evidence is. Yours is definitely, you know, it, it makes a, a claim, but there's no quantification to it. There's no estimate about what the impact is. 
Um, it's it's a little vague. It basically says, well, there's a. It does appear that uh, laws restricting guns uh, result in fewer gun deaths. That's sort of conclusionary. Like I said, I don't know what the data is based on. You do a good job trying to qualify the particular source and make them credible, uh, which I think is the right way to go on this, especially when the quote is that vague. Uh, it would probably be a little bit stronger if we had some detail as to what the study said in that particular case. And then basically you present three counterclaims that don't address the issues that the advocate talked about, but instead address other issues that would be related to a policy on this argument, but not necessarily to uh, the argument as it's presented. The risk to children, um, okay, well, there's a risk to children, and you yourself say that there's no federal law on this issue, so is there any demonstration that a law would reduce the risk to children? I don't know, uh, and I don't know how that would apply to the advocate's argument on this point. On self-injury, uh, I think you've got a good piece of information here that talks about how the risk of self-injury increases with the presence of a gun. Uh, however, what laws would be able to effectively reduce that is not explained. And uh, do we have any comparison between places that have laws and the suicide rate, or are we only talking about the availability of guns? I think that that's a legitimate question to ask there. And then uh, the general point that you have on the last point, well, the advocate, I believe, presented some information that said that they suggested places where people have access to guns, uh, there's a, a greater control on crime. Uh, your argument seems to suggest uh, the opposite of this, but again, it is a very generic information, and not, you know, I'm not a statistician, I haven't been keeping track of it, but uh, I do. I have heard that there's been a substantial increase in gun sales in the last uh, few years, and uh, I, you know, I'm not sure I've heard of a common an increase in murders that have been going on in those number of years, except in Chicago, which apparently all hell is breaking loose in. All right. <laughs>